Namaskar. Hello and welcome to Pete Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Today I have a brand new guest, Karthik Gaur. He is a Vastu expert and also a Vedic astrologer. And we are going to be talking about the current elections uh, to India as well as a few other things. A fascinating journey, if you will, go going back in time and memory and also coming back to the present. May I request all of you to please like this video and if you have not already subscribed to our channel please do subscribe to our channel let's welcome our guest kartik gore kartik ji namaskar ram ram om namah shivaya how are you namaste ram ram om namah shivaya jay somnath so jay somnath you know uh, you brought up a very interesting phrase here and from what i have uh, what little i have read of you uh, you belong to somnath you are uh, your generations have been in Somnath. Um, I think you belong to a, a priestly class there, if I'm not wrong. Talk to us a little bit about your background, your uh, where you are today, what's your background, and you know how we are having this conversation about something that perhaps is not exactly you know what you trained for. Over to you, sir. Yeah. So what I'm trying to cater to your audience is to basically tell you my why. And I always say that it is not what you do is important. It is why you do that is more important, right? As Simon Sinek says, don't tell me what you do. Tell me why you do. So the why of mine is also rooted in Somnath. So I come from a family of priests. You know, all my forefathers were the priests. They were in Somnath. My uh, nanas and nannies, you know, so uh, my nana was in fact the best karmakand, you know, in, in those days in Gujarat, uh, coming from a place called Mudeti which used to have the best Brahmins and even now it has got the best Sanskrit school, you know. But when I was sort of growing up and me being from a logical bend of mind, I always wanted to know the logic, you know. Don't tell me that, okay, Saturn is uh, transiting here. Tell me, you know, what are the effects? You know, don't tell me, you know, to fast on Ekadashi. Tell me why I should fast on Ekadashi. Don't tell me, you know, do the Nirjala Ekadashi. Tell me what is the logic to doing Nirjala Ekadashi. So I was always very logical bent of mind and our forefathers or my uh, great grandfathers, they were good with what they did, but they were not able to explain it very logically for a guy like me to be sort of entertained, so to say. So and then I shifted to Mumbai later on. I did my engineering and uh, one day at an airport, I met a gentleman who gave me two great predictions. He told me that the girl that you like is going to end up marrying her boss. And if ever you get into Jyotish, if you get into astrology, you will teach half of the world. And those are the two predictions he told me. And by the time I had come to Mumbai, so I thought that maybe this guy is a little woozy. Is he drunk or is, he, is it a scam or what? He is going to ask me for money for sure. But he didn't ask me for anything. He even didn't give me his contact number. He did not give me his card or anything at all. No PR exercise at all. And he went away. And six months down the line, the girl I used to like at that point of time married her boss. So, <laughs> so I started thinking, my goodness, you know, this guy was bullseye. And if at all, you know, the first prediction was right. What about the second prediction that I can be a very good astrologer and I'll teach half of the world. So that's where the journey started. The hunger started and me being logical minded, I ordered a lot of books. So I thought that knowledge is in the books. You know, three months down the line, I understood that Jyotish knowledge is not in the books. It is it is at the feet of the guru or shall we say, it is always between the lines. So a lot of time rishis will write something very simple and you feel, yes, yes, this is the literal meaning. But that is not the meaning what the rishis have talked about. So if you don't have a guru, you don't have a mentor or you don't come from a sound background, you will completely mess out on the context or the crux of Vedic astrology, so to say. So that's where I met my Gurudev and, you know, so my Jyotish lineage is from a place called Orissa in Jagannath Puri, you know, and in the first class, I remember very clearly, I was in the Himalayas in a place called Almoda. And in those days, it was part of Uttar Pradesh. Now it is Uttarakhand. So my first class was on Atmakaraka, you know, which means the soul. And after the first class, you know, I remember um, I was meditating. And after that, I just sat down and thought to myself, that Karthik, you know, if you can learn this logically and if you can make it very, very palatable and easy for 
general people to understand you can really help a lot of souls you know you can really help a lot of entrepreneurs you can generally help a lot of arm janta into an important aspect of our life which is decision making and if you have a good jyotishi if you have got sound background then the best way to use it is decision making so that was a major why for me and and that's where the journey from somnath to the himalayas via jagannath puri <laughs> wonderful so let's get back to somnath uh, the legend of somnath has been that the lingam itself used to float and it used to rotate and this is this is doable in modern science you can explain it because there are some levitation thing in fact there is a levitating magnet train that uh, people have experimented with i think in china they have tried it i don't know if it is in commission or not but essentially you by using the right amount of weights you can make an object float by having two magnets on top and bottom and it appears that they did that in not only in somna but also in konark temple again yeah. back to uh, konark which is very close yeah. to puri uh, jagannath and uh, so uh, it talked to us a little bit about the history of the somnath temple is today the lingam floating or is it uh, on the floor no today is very much on the floor and uh, the fact of the matter is it is not the same shivalinga right so it was reestablished yes, or, or yeah. redone because of the mogal invasions and all that we went right, through right, right, but right. prima facie we need to know that uh, somnath is the first jyotirlinga so when you look at the of concept the of jyotirlinga yeah. of all the 12 jyotirlinga it is the first prathama jyotirlinga and there is a logical understanding to somnath jyotirlinga if you see the chart in the background of the dwadash jyotirlinga it is associated with a sign called taurus for a long time people didn't know why there are only dwadash jyotirlinga dwadash jyotirlinga the 12 jyotirlingas are nothing but associated with the 12 signs of zodiac so the second house or taurus is the place where moon gets exalted and the establishment of somnath is done by lord krishna himself and lord krishna is associated with a planet called moon and moon gets exalted in taurus so who else but lord krishna had to come to establish somnath and lord krishna is associated with this kaliyuga among all the avatars lord uh, krishna is said to be the avatar for kaliyuga so in this yoga somnath is one jyotirling which will give you the most easiest and fastest results you know because it is associated with chandra and chandra is associated with shri krishna shri krishna is associated with your longevity health and basically your manas so 99% frankly speaking of our challenges or problems are mind level problems either our insecurity either depression or or we get into the low phases or our health issues they are all majorly chandra issues or our Uh, sort of name getting bad or weaker we giving a bad 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 reputation all those are associated with chandra and lord krishna being the yuga avatar this jyotirlinga had to be established by lord krishna and he is the one who is going to protect you whenever you go to somnath this is why somnath is so important for example you look at uh, rameshwaram rameshwaram is associated with surya and hence it is associated with shri ram and hence shri ram had to come to establish rameshwaram so he had to establish rameshwaram and then ultimately go to fight ravana so everything is very logical when you talk about even jyotirlinga and why a certain remedy is done in a certain jyotirlinga and all those jyotirlinga also are associated with your own horoscope so there are some jyotirlingas which are very like what we say one size fits all for example you are having a work related issue you can obviously go to bhima shankara you know but then there are certain jyotirlingas which are based on your horoscope because they are associated with your past life and as a result of which you need to find that exact jyotirlinga which is associated with your horoscope also one of the legends about uh, somnath and lord krishna is that he brought shavantaka mani uh, it's a it, it, this mani is a stone it's a jewel a gemstone i should say and it has some magical powers and it is supposed to be in somnath talk to us a little bit about this legend and uh, how you know somnath was always prosperous 
you know, you have this Ghazni raiding several times. I mean, some people say 17 times. And uh, yet, you know, some of these things, it took, it was like a long caravan where they were taking things and going away. And yet, when he left, they rebuilt this temple again. It had this magical way of producing or regenerating. Well, people really, really loved the Somna temple. Talk to us a little bit about Shamantakwani. Yeah, so see, it is it is coincidental or is it very, very logically planned that all the gemstones are associated with Chandra. So whenever we talk about gemstones, they are all coming under the gambit of moon because moon is associated and every gemstone has to be correlated with moon in your chart. So the concept of Sevantaka Mani is also to say that, hey, first and foremost, if Lord Krishna has decided to stay in Gujarat, you know, then definitely, you know, Gujarat has to be the prosperous state. So whenever people ask me that, you know, you Gujaratis are very lucky or, you know, Gujarat is generally very prosperous, I always tell them that, hey, listen, you know, we respected Lord Krishna. You know, we gave him a lot of love. We gave him a lot of food, you know, so, but natural, we have to get those blessings. And that whole region, what we call it as Viraval, has got special magnetic pull also, you know, as a result of which, you know, the concepts like the Jyotirlinga used to float, all used to happen because of the magnetic uh, and the strategic placement, so to say. You know, and it was a port city also, and that's the reason it was very vulnerable also to be attacked also. So there were the pros and cons. But the whole concept of Sevantika Mani is also associated with the hood of uh, Shiva. And he right. has to have an... That is that is the larger concept that, hey, listen, this is the gemstone. Though in Galyuga, if you're looking at the rarest of gemstone, just come to Somnath. If Lord Chandra, you know, who had so much of uh, challenges because of uh, over sexuality and he had that issue because it is Chandra, right? So he had this weakness towards women. So people who are having those issues also, you know, in a subtle way, it was there that in Kaluga, if there is one place where you can go, you know, to actually get rid of 90% of your challenges, it is Somnath. Wonderful. So you put together a slide deck for our viewers' benefit. Feel free to let us know when you would like to start referring to that because we are now going to get into the nuts and bolts of uh, this conversation. Viewers, we are going to be talking about a lot of things. For example, uh, supposing you want to think about the chances of BJP winning 2024, then you have to go back to the time and date and place where the party was formed, exact place and exact time. See, astrology is very accurate if you have the basics accurate. My my understanding, Ji, please feel free to correct me. The place where the incidents happened, the time, and the exact uh, location in terms of uh, uh, coordinates, what exactly happened. And, and date, time, year, you need to be very perfect. If you have that within, I think you can tell us what is the granularity. Like, for example, if somebody was born at 657, and if he gives you the time at 7, 7 a.m., does it make a difference? If it is 6.40, does it make a difference? Just talk to us a little bit about the basics. Then we can jump into a little bit more technical details about this. Exactly. So what you're talking about is what we, what we in Jyotish term call it as rectification. So I always go with the notion that the chart is wrong. You know, and uh, I always jokingly say that the horoscope is nothing but a film script. You know, you are the writer because it is your horoscope and all the grahas are nothing but the actors and the roles are something that you have defined for them. So technically, if somebody is a little harsh to you, somebody is a little pain for you, somebody who is excellent to you, you know, just understand and let it go, considering that even that bad person's role has been written by you. And how has it been written? Based on some past life karmas, as a result of which either it is a payback time or you are opening up a new account. And if you are going to open up a new account, then it is like, you know, you are going to have a Netflix season two, season three, season four, and you are going to be reborn again and again and again, just trying to prove yourself right. So what I was trying to tell you is that the timing is everything. You know, just two hours before talking to you, I was doing a rectification. The lady was very sure about her time. She said that, sir, my mother told me it is perfect. So forget about the other divisional charts. So technically, there are something called a 16 divisional charts, 1, 6. And these 16 divisional charts are associated with 16 colors of Shri Krishna. Again, you see the Krishna connection, Somnath connection. 
So technically speaking, we are supposed to clear our karmas in 16 divisional charts for us to even think of having moksha. And who is going to help us? It is Lord Krishna. He is going to say that, hey, I have already told that just do one simple mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, and I will guarantee you get moksha. And that has been confirmed and reconfirmed by Maharishi Parashara in Brihaspat Parashara Hora Shastra, where he has said that there is one mantra which is the best mantra for yoga, which is Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, or what we call it as Dvada Shakshari, because it maps to the 12th house of a horoscope, and 12th house gives moksha. So everything is extremely logical. So whenever a chart comes in front of the me, you know, I always tell them that, hey, listen, there is something called as a movie. And then there is something called as a subtitle. So the subtitle and the movie have to match, right? Otherwise, the viewing experience is not good. Similarly, a good astrologer who has learned from the parampara and he has strong basics will always see whether the movie and the subtitles are matching. If not, he is going to ask him that, okay, you know, there is a chart called as uh, Dwada Shamsha, which is associated with, let's say, parents. So just looking at that chart, you know, you can talk everything about your father. Okay, your father is a spy, is it? Was your father a spy? And the person gets shocked. That how do you know? I can't talk about it. But yes, stop the recording. Yes, he was a spy. Karthik ji, how do you know? I say, oh, there is a Ketu connection in the 10th house associated with some other things. So he has to be a spy. So then people get this new respect for Jyotish. They say, wow, this works. Oh, your mother was a very good cook and she had a round face. Oh, yes, she was a fantastic cook and she had a round face. How do you know, Kartik ji? Oh, you look at the fourth house. Fourth house is the mother. And since 10th house, you have sat in from there. She was very hardworking. Oh, yes, she was very hardworking. So you understand what I'm trying to say? Within those 16 divisional charts, I have to see that, hey, listen, you know, this guy's life should match what I'm talking about, the movie and the subtitle. So then you talk about the wife, the work, every every divisional chart has to match. And then you start the consultation. So similarly, if you even look at uh, BJP's chart, you know, BJP's chart has got Surya in the 10th house. So for me, the moment I saw that chart, I said that, yes, this is BJP's chart, correct? Why? Because Surya is in the 10th house. Surya rules temple. Surya rules Sri Ram. I told you before, related to Rameshwaram. Yes. So if we see logically and very calmly, what is the growth story of BJP? Growth story of BJP from two seats to 303 seats has been the story of a, a promise to build a Ram temple to the promise being fulfilled for Ram temple. And Prabhu Shri Ram said, fair enough. You have done this much of work. I'm going to ensure you will get Delhi. You will sit on the throne. You will sit on the throne because you have brought me from tent to the temple. So if you have done, done this much of work, then technically the least I can do for you is Narendra Bhai. You will again on 4th of June say, Main Narendra Damodar Das Modi Ishwar Ki Shapat Leta hon. So that's the story. <laughs> so uh, with your permission, we can start looking at the charts, uh, the slide text, and you can talk to that because you've referred to some of them. Maybe it will make more sense to put up the charts now. Can we have the charts, please? Yeah, sure. please go ahead, sir. Uh, we've, we've talked about these things and maybe you can uh, connect them with the charts. Go ahead. Yeah. So for the viewers, this would be a very, very interesting chart. If you see, all our 12 Rashis are associated with a Jyotirlinga. If you see Mesha has got Rameshwaram. Taurus, which is the exaltation of moon and the Parivar part. Right? So when we say Modika Parivar, it is basically enhancing his power of Somnath. He is from Gujarat. Let's not forget. So that's Somnath in Taurus. In Gemini, we have Nageshwara. But this Nageshwara is not actually from Gujarat. So I'm very sorry. You know, that is the wrong. The real Nageshwara is in the Himalayas. The fourth house or Karka is associated with Omkareshwara. The fifth house is Vaidyanatha. The sixth house or Virgo sign, rather more than houses, it should be signs. Virgo is associated with Mallika Arjuna. The seventh house or Tula Rashi is Mahakaleshwar. Now Mahakaleshwar is associated with Tula. So how about, and Tula is associated with business. So if you are just having purely business issues or, you know, challenges related to seventh house, partnership issues, how about going to Mahakaleshwar? So, 
so scorpio is associated with grishneshwara is the inner secrets of ketu whereas the ninth house or sagittarius is kashi vishwanath so kashi vishwanath has a direct connection with a rashi called dhanu and dhanu natural house is the ninth house which is associated with dharma so if somebody has having an issue related to dharma not able to understand religion too much of confusion or having too much of radicalism you know just go to kashi vishwanath you will understand the concept of guru you will understand the concept of what is shiva why is the kotwal why do we go to uh, different places within kashi to ultimately go to kashi you can't go kashi directly so those are all certain secrets that you will understand when you go to kashi vishwanath bhima shankara is the natural 10th house of a horoscope 10th house is associated with work so if you are having work challenges or out of work not getting a job bhima shankara is the place to go because it is the place which is the exaltation of mangal which is going to give you work 11th house is kedarnath you know which is associated with aquarius you know fantastic and the 12th house most importantly meena rashi is associated with trambakeshwara so anybody who has got relationship challenges they can go to mahakaleshwar but anybody who is having marriage issues can go to trambakeshwara why because that is the exaltation of shukra so these are all nitty gritties now for your viewers let me give you a simple way you know probably they would love this concept of understanding what is their jyotirlinga you know you all will have a horoscope where you will have moon in the chart okay so find out moon and find out you know the kendras to the moon for example i have moon in gemini okay and then you have to find out something called as aruda lagna you know maybe in the next uh, yeah. appearance next conversation like yeah. understand all those things and then you find a common sign and that is your jyotirlinga so next time i am going to give you an understanding or a deeper understanding of how to find out your specific jyotirlinga which will be interesting wonderful 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 uh, this is this is a totally new thing that uh, you know i was not aware of that uh, you know you can actually map the jyotirlingas this way it's wonderful and let's yeah. get to the take a next chart which is that of narendra bhai damodaras modi um there was a small issue with this so talk to us a little bit about what happened and uh, where we are today yeah so uh, for your viewers let me tell you that in 2012 uh, i had made a very very famous prediction at that point of time that you know narendra bhai modi is going to be bjp's prime ministerial nominee bjp will win the election narendra bhai modi will win with majority narendra bhai modi will be a three time prime minister and he will be all the three times with majority and believe me nobody believe me you know and, and everybody started telling me that you are a gujarati so that's the reason you are talking about narendra bhai modi and i told him no you know it's his chart you know it's it's if it was just talking about anything just because he was a gujarati i would have done that 20 years back now my logic was based on this chart of tula lagna now there is always a debate where there are some astrologers taking scorpio lagna or vrishika rashi and and some people are convinced that he is tula lagna and i was always convinced that it is tula lagna why because of this simple logic that he has got his 10th lord chandra in the second house with moon okay and i have shown a nice chair over there you know because it is causing a yoga called simhasana yoga simhasana basically means the throne you know so right at the chandra dasha is when you know he became prime minister you know and during chandra dasha i remember in 2019 you know when the second term was there i had given a famous prediction that you know some nimitta or an omen related to mars will come up and by god's grace at that time i also told that who else but rahul gandhi will give the nimitta you know because he is the one who is actually bjp's best uh, best campaigner uh, <laughs> campaigner so to say so what happened you calmly think how nimittas and omens work and how when mahadev wants something to happen he will make it happen in a certain way you know and the story line so mangal is associated with the army mangal is associated with the security so what did rahul gandhi talk about initially talked about rafael right and then he gave that famous thing chokidar chor hai chokidar is mangal 
and the moment i heard that i said that forget you know mayawati and uh, this people coming together and samajwadi coming together up me itna kam hoga utna kam hoga but well, forget all that they will go beyond their last tally why because now he has activated this simhasana yoga in this particular time i said he now the dashas have changed so what happens is whenever a planet are in yuti means two planets together then they work little differently it's like when we are together you know let's say if i'll ask you you know what do you prefer tea or coffee so even if i want to have tea you will say okay kartik i want to coffee i'll say okay do coffee lana you know why because now we are in a sambandha right similarly right. the results are exchanged so now technically he is in a mars dasha but it will give him results of moon so what is moon moon is all about parivar family somnath second house so what is the whole twitter campaign modi ka parivar what was the campaign in 2019 mai bhi chaukidar everybody wrote in their twitter timeline right right you understand how logically things are happening and and for a layman like me i am just sitting there and seeing how mahadev makes it happen so when people were convinced and i was among the few guys who at the peak of covid huh? second phase when all those issues were coming and uh, with oxygen cylinders this that everybody was even the best supporter of narendra bhai modi was a little on the back foot and i was the one saying that you know listen you know we are very lucky to have a prime minister like narendra bhai modi you can't even imagine if congress was there at the helm of affairs what would have happened to india and even at that time i was saying that you know don't worry you know he is coming for the third time and he'll come with bigger majority and it was it was with the conviction of of logic because his varnada lagna is there which is associated with with, with work and mangal is there in the second house causing that simhasana yoga with chandra also causing a ruchak mahapurush yoga which means that he is a terrible fighter you know narendra bhai modi can not be defeated you know he has that mark of shiva let us put it that way you know it is it is very very impossible and that's why you know kashi vishwanath means like double shiva it's like double engine ki sarkar you know so it is it is very clear and and this time you know six months back you know in december when i was in ayodhya that time i had given a prediction that bjp 324 plus minus 10 seats and uh, nda so to say 369 plus minus 10 seats you know so this was my prediction even then even before then and in 2012 i had already said he will be a three time prime minister so this is my logic to narendra damodar das modi wonderful and now let's go to the next slide please now here we are talking about the uh, elections and you chose a particular time for that that is the start of the election is like the first phase the time or how is that talk this thing through for us yeah so this is actually the time when the first day of polling happened see this is called as murata right it's all about timing i always say that the difference between creating stress and creating prosperity is how you time your events right so while in uh, ayodhya in december 2023 i had said that elections because there were talks of early elections happening and probably it could happen in february this that and i said that listen with my whatever little sense that i have of jyotish i feel the election will only happen when surya will be in aries why because of surya has to be in the most exalted form because it is ram mandir and i also gave a opinion that hey listen you know surya has to cross 5 degrees you know so there is no gandanta effect or something like that and that should be the first day of the polling because that's very important as far as murata is concerned and it is all recorded in those uh, jyotish conferences also and and uh, luckily you know the when the dates came it was exactly when surya was in aries this was the first day of polling which was 19th of uh, april and uh, Surya had crossed five degrees, so he's five degrees twenty seconds. So the Gandanta effect of of Mina and uh, Aries was also gone away. So this is how basically the timing also happens, and this is uh, a clear indication. You see, this was shared long back, and I showed Sri Ram looking at Surya. So even today, when people say that you know there is no wave election, there is no this, no that, I always smile and I tell them that you know how is it possible. you know there is an undercurrent 
and there is always been an undercurrent which you have never seen so so called pollsters or so called experts even in 2014 you see the debates were the same right in 2019 the debates were same they could never see a tsunami in 2019 also you know on the hindsight they all said that oh there is a tsunami this is a wave election but if you see 3 months before or even before one month you know they all said that it's a tight election this is election that is election and they are saying the same thing again you know so a guy like me would always say that uh, you know people or the silent voter are going to be very kritagya kritagya means it, it's like a vote of thanks you know which most people are not seeing so while people are saying polling is coming down polling is coming up and i say hey, that listen whatever is happening narendra bhai modi's polling people are going to the station you know yes there might be 2% down but people of congress voters are 5% down so net net it is bjp which is going to gain because all these people have this kritagya bhava of ram temple that thank you so much if it was no narendra modi there was no ram temple i am not mincing my words at all yes there is an way to get it done he used that way to get it done but if he was not there we would still be waiting for dates after dates after dates after dates and finally people will be giving us that okay we can have a hospital there we can have this there you can have that there and all those things so this is very clear and and it is a wonderful murata and uh, bjp is going to better its seat and if prashant kishor also he is going to say with a lower voice that yes net net bjp is going to actually better than its last time then you know that it is going to be much more better than last time because he is always going to give a conservative view left handed compliments uh, next slide please there is one other interesting slide here so a party itself has a horoscope based on the date and time of formation i think the place also so you talk to us a little bit about this that the sunday 6th uh, uh, april 1980 11:44 am delhi india talk to us a little bit about this yeah so this is the time when the bjp was formed you know so initially whatever the jangsang they had so bjp was formally made as a party in mithuna lagna and uh, surya is in the 10th house so as i said that you know if bjp leaves any temple you know then frankly speaking there is there's no bjp left so going forward also you know that this temple thing has to be a very very important agenda or work that they have to do now suri also works development so i was joking in some other channel that nowadays the joke is that you know whenever somebody puts their uh, voting finger and says that i voted for development it is understood that they have voted for bjp why because surya rules development he is the king is the one who brings in the development and all and surya rules temples so beyond this ram temple also i had said at that point of time based on the pran pratishta murata that there are two more temples which are going to be very very important and one of the temple will be having a judgment very soon and if you remember immediately after that within like couple of weeks you know the kashi vishwanath uh, the gyan vapi thing you know that got right. thing and the uh, selar the puja started and that is that is precisely the time you know because uh, that uh, horoscope has also got these things and over here also i think bjp should never leave in fact one of the things which i have suggested or you know i would like to suggest is the whole understanding of how the temples work why are the temples still under the control of government you know so that could be a great sort of a step but i truly believe that the way narendra bhai modi works there is a lot of work already being done on the background so that whenever a step is taken it doesn't make things bad to worse right you don't want to make it completely decentralized and then find that instead of person a now person b is making money but at the end of the day the temples are anyways not being kept well so he is working and there will be a mechanism whereby you know ultimately that thing will be done and i see that ultimately bjp can always survive where there is a temple agenda always in his manifesto which has to be done and that's going to ensure that they are never going to be out of power thank you so much time is just flying uh, kartik ji and sure. uh, what what i would uh, you know like you to conclude is this is the first viewers in a series of talks that we are going to have with kartik ji it's absolutely fantastic the way he explains things my little understanding of horoscopes 
uh, I have another friend who comes to Sri PVR Narsimharaji also talks yeah. about things. Yeah. And and he has uh, he has said a couple of things in one of his hangouts in that you know somebody's astrological chart is not just contained in the rashis you have to look beyond the ra rashis to get a little bit more in depth understanding for example trying to decode uh, the biological charts of twins Correct. and and he told me that uh, uh, the charts can vary to a granularity of 24 seconds Correct. And we Correct. know for sure twins cannot be born within that 24 second period. Yeah. I mean, if they are born, maybe they'll have identical charts. I don't know. So just talk yeah. to us a little bit about the importance of astrology. What can we do in form? Like, for example, you, you know, I wake up in the morning, you know, some some simple rituals for anybody that gets their mind in the proper place before they start, uh, you know, working. Yeah, so PVRG uh, told a very, very logical thing, as I also mentioned that there are 16 divisional charts, right? And all the divisional charts vary at a very, very different uh, sort of a thing. There are smaller divisional charts like Shashti Amsha, D60, which tells us everything about our past life. You know, for example, you know how we died in our past life. That's why some people have phobias. Some people are scared of height. Some people are scared of water. Some people are are just scared in the night as if like they have been stabbed and they wake up suddenly. You know, it has got a direct correlation and you can easily see that in a chart called Shashti Amsha because the third from Aruda Lagna will tell us how they died in their past life. So it can be a very, very good tool for healing people also. So a lot of remedies sometimes I give from Shashti Amsha. Because there could be a past life karma, you know, which is which is so gruesome that it is it is coming this life and it is giving them a lot of pain. As I generally say that, you know, you are born with either a traveler's check or a debit note. For few people, the traveler's check is bigger as a result of which they are born to a good family or all the decision that they have to make in the morning is whether I go to the gym or play golf. You know, and then there are certain people who are coming with a huge debit note as a result of which at a very young age, they don't have eyesight or they go through autism, you know, a lot of other challenges for which there is no logical explanation to this life. You know, now having said that, people like you and me, so once the horoscope is made, you know, it is it is the concept of Gita which works. That, hey, from the time you are born, you are doing karmas, which we call it as Kriyaman karma, which are going to override the dashas and the antar dashas to a certain level. So you can't just because you have a good chart or a good fantastic ninth lord, you are extremely lucky. That doesn't mean that you can do all the karmas and get away with it. Ultimately, there is the Trishula of Shiva, which is also watching you. So at that level, it is very important. So I generally always tell people that, hey, listen, you know, live and let live is a best mantra to go by. You know, and, and don't be judgmental about people because you just don't know, you know, at what stage of your life you might end up doing the same thing. Or, you know, if you were in their shoes, maybe you are doing even worse. You know, so that is the first part of it. When it comes to morning rituals, I always tell people that, you know, keep one focus. You know, I've, I've seen people, especially in India, this happens that, um, you know, like guru shopping, they also do God shopping, you know. so. Pray to Shiva within one week, no result. Okay, you are dismissed. Okay, now I'll go for Hanuman. You know, one week I'll try. No, it doesn't work. Okay, Ganesha, I appoint you. You know, oh, with Ganesha, I had little uh, good results. Okay, I give you one month extension. Oh, after one month, no. Okay, I'll pray to Vishnu. Don't do that. Based on your fifth lord of the chart, you know, that is your bhakti. You know, drill in one direction. I always tell people also, if you are having a puja room or puja house, Ideally, in your puja, you know, have only one thing. Like I have only Shivalinga, you know, and within Shivalinga, there are all the devatas. So technically, I do my Pancha Devata puja on the Shivalinga. And there is just one Surya Yantra below it. So technically, all the Pancha Devata pujas, wherein you pray to Ganesha, you start with your Guru, you go to Ganesha, then you pray to Devi, then you pray to Vishnu, and then finally you pray to Shiva. The order can be changed based on whether you are a Shaivite, you are a Vaishnavite or whatever it is. So if you are following Vishnu, you can still have just Krishna or Vishnu or Balakrishna. You know, you are a Devi worshipper, you can have just one Devi. The point I'm trying to say is that, you know, focus on one, 
you know outside your temple you can have multiple things but the things that are in the temple has to be kept very clean else you get shani dosha you might fall sick so what is the simple remedy keep your temple very very sorted keep very minimal thing so you can get time to clean it every day you can do it properly and the shani doshas don't come on you if you are going to keep it very cluttered then to that level you are you are making life your life very complicated Wonderful. Thank you so much, Karthik Ji. And uh, viewers, we'll be back again with Karthik Ji in, uh, in a couple of weeks' time uh, based on our uh, mutual calendars. But uh, please do like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button for notification. Karthik Ji, what a wonderful session we had. We're going to be coming back again and talking to you about other topics. Thank you so much, sir. Namaskar. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you.